All right, good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming to the St. Mary's College of Maryland housing presentation tonight. My name is Shanna Meyer, and I am the Interim Vice President for Student Affairs. Student Affairs is the outside the classroom experiences that you'll get at St. Mary's. So it's everything from where you live to the activities that you do, the fun things that you do, the ways that you connect with other students, the activities, the student organizations, we're really glad that you're here to learn more about housing on campus. Elena, I see that you can't hear anything. Um, I guess check your volume, make sure that you have your correct speaker up and running. You can do that uh, next to the carrot, next to the mute button, and that might be able to help. Can everybody else hear at this point? I see some thumbs up. All right, we're gonna keep going. Just a few other logistics. Uh, yay, good, I'm glad you can hear. Um, well, we're excited that you're here. This meeting is being recorded. I think you all received a permission button about that. Um, I do wanna let you know that it looks like everybody's got their mics muted. Thank you for that, that helps keep us focused. The other thing that works really well is if in the top right corner of your screen, you smash that view button and you get it to the speaker. Um, you change it so that you see who the speaker view is. That way, when somebody's talking, you can see their face up close and present, and you don't always have to see all of the other pictures of everybody else. So res life is something that is really important to me. Res life, residential life, housing, they all mean the same thing. And basically what it means is where you're going to live when you come to St. Mary's. Um, this is where I started my career at a college campus, was working in residential life, and I just love the connections that students make with each other. Super convenient, you don't quite have to cook all of your meals yet, um, and you can make a lot of great friends living in res life. So we have two of our residential life experts with us today. We have Derek and we have Danielle. And they are here to answer all of the questions. They're going to start tonight with a presentation. If you do have any questions at any time, go ahead and put them down in the chat box. And when they end their presentation, then we will answer any questions you have. Tonight's all about you. We want you to feel comfortable coming to campus. We want you to have your questions asked, answered, asked and answered. So there's no question too small, no question too silly. Make sure that you get those answered. We're here for you tonight. So with that, I'm gonna turn things over to Danielle and Derek. Take it away. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Derek Young. I am the Executive Director of Residence Life and Interim Dean of Students at St. Mary's. I've been here for about 15 years and I'm still a graduate of St. Mary's. I started um, as an RA here and left for a little bit, but fell in love with St. Mary's as many alum do and decided to come back. I have a great staff here who's gonna to talk to you more about what to expect in housing um, and what it's like to be a student in housing. We have a student with us to talk about that experience as well. So I'm gonna let uh, them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Danielle Brush. I'm the Associate Director of Residence Life. Um, I've been on staff here for about three years, I think. Um, first as the assistant, one of the assistant directors and now as the associate director. So I oversee a lot of our housing operations as well as student conduct stuff. Um, you guys will all definitely get a lot of emails from me as we move through the housing selection process. I'll probably be one of your main points of contact for that process as well. So you'll definitely be getting a lot of info from me. Um, so I'll let Becca, who's our resident, one of our residence hall coordinators, introduce herself as well. Go ahead, Becca. Hi, everyone. My name's Becca. Becca. I'm the current dean at St. Mary's. Um, and um, as Danielle said, I'm a residence hall coordinator. Um, I'll get into a little bit more of what that means later, but I'm really happy to see you all here. And we also and have... Oh. Go ahead, Derek, sorry. <laughs> we also have uh, someone who's not here with us, but uh, our wonderful office manager, Monica Armstrong, who sort of just keeps us in line. Uh, she's sort of the front office person who will answer all of your questions and help get you to what you need if you have any questions. We'll get started with our presentation now. All right, so throughout the presentation here, we have some fun trivia questions for you all. So if you wanna grab a pen and a piece of paper right now or keep track on your phone, 
Uh, we're going to have five questions and at the end we'll have a Google Doc where you can put in all of your answers and if you get all five answers correct, you'll be entered into a chance to get a prize that will mail to you. All right, so we have our first question. What is the most watched original Netflix show? You, Bridgerton, Outer Banks, or The Crown? Go ahead and take a minute to write your answer down. I think these will also be like in the Google Doc too. So if you like miss it now, it'll come back around. So no, no real pressure. Okay, so while you're mulling that over, um, we'll first talk to you a little bit about our first year housing. Um, so we have four traditional halls um, that are really conveniently located on this campus. So we have Queen Anne, who, um, which houses all of our primarily first, first year female students. Dorchester primarily houses first year male students. So we have Prince George and Caroline um, who are co-ed by floor um, or by hall and wing. So there are some pictures on the screen of like where these are each situated. Um, Queen Anne is for a little bit further away, but it's kind of in a very idealistic location. You have the river like right across the street, very nice view from this back balcony right here, if you could see that. Um, so you can also see like the pond that we have, and then you get a good view of like the library and student center. So it's very nice to live over there. Um, there's like the woods on one side. So even like walking down there is just like quintessential St. Mary's in my opinion. Um, a little bit farther up a ways is our circle. So we have Dorchester, Prince George, and Caroline all situated in one location. There's a, a little drive-through circle right here. You can kind of see that. That sort of connects all of them. Um, they're very conveniently located to our, most of our academic buildings like Schaefer, um, Good Pastor, and Montgomery Hall. Um, you will be very familiar with these places when you arrive on campus. But all of all of these are pretty, pretty evenly spaced out like on campus with all the things that they have in them. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about what all is in each of these buildings as well. Um, but we kind of just wanted to set the scene, I guess, here <laughs> for you guys in terms of what will be offered to most of our first year students. Um, we do have slightly different options for any of you that might be transferring in from a different institution. Um, while you can still live in these places, you have more options available to you with our um, returning students who, which house the sophomore, junior, and senior students. Um, so there's just like more options there, but we'll kind of jump into these guys. So I will, you, if we sorry, can, go ahead, Derek. <laughs> uh, I will say that each building, you kind of think of Harry Potter, uh, <laughs> house has its own personality that each of these buildings also and if you think of the typical what you see in movies, um, you know, the, the rooms are situated on a long hallway, so students can open their doors and really engage with each other, with each other after class. So it's a great time to um, have those interactions with the random passerby or about uh, what they're involved in, what they're learning in class, and start to form bonds that way during your first year. Okay, so what can you find um, mostly in each of these rooms? So we have the standard furniture in all of these spaces. So there's two of everything um, in every room. So there are two twin beds. Um, so extra long, uh, which are nice. Uh, make sure you buy the right sheets before you come, inside tip. Uh, there are two desks and two chairs. So the students that are living in these spaces don't share those. There are two dressers, um, as you can see in this picture, um, they can fit under the bed. I think some rooms, Derek, if I'm not mistaken, still have like the double long ones at the bottom, but the shelving spaces is still the same. Um, and then there are two closets or wardrobes in each of those rooms as well. So there's plenty of space to store um, items that you want to bring with you. Um, and you, you can move your beds and all the furniture is movable in the room so you can kind of reconfigure it um, to however you want when you get in there. Of course, like working with your roommate too, if you have a roommate, um, but the beds are bunkable in these spaces as well. Um, so that, that can also provide space um, for you to like bring in extra furniture. If you see in this one, the student that lived in this room brought in a futon. Um, a lot of our students bring in uh, like a lounge chair or a small futon with them too, because that does fit pretty easily in these spaces. 
Um, the, be the bedrooms here also have uh, Wi-Fi capabilities. All of our Wi-Fi in the halls were upgraded this year, so it's been running pretty smoothly. Um, so that's that's really nice. And there's also the satellite cable that's available. So you can hook your TVs into that um, to be able to watch cable here. And then we have the air conditioning units as well. So all of the rooms, especially, it's nice, especially in the summer um, when you guys are moving in, it'll be kind of hot. So the air conditioning will be nice and pumping for when we're moving in and being all together at one time. Um, most of these spaces have the overhead lights on top too, um, but a lot of students will bring in lamps or desk lamps and different things. Uh, students can bring in rugs that they may want to put um, on the floor to kind of decorate. Um, there's a wide variety of things that students can bring in for decorations. Like here they have like the twinkly lights um, that are hanging off the walls and different things like that. So you really can make these rooms um, how you want them to look. They do look quite plain when you come in, but they definitely have the space to kind of dress up how you want it to make it more of your own space, which is really, really nice. So we also have three specialty housing options. So we have Safe House, which is our um, substance alcohol free experience housing. Um, so we have a space located in Queen Anne um, on the first floor, and then we have a space in Wearing Commons that is usually designated for those options. Um, there are monthly programs that the safe house residents, or if we have another staff member that's working with those programs that will add additional programming um, for these students, or will program directly for education regarding substances and alcohol on campus. But Usually the residents that live here form a pretty tight community because there's a lot going on um, that the RAs are able to offer, RAs or resident assistants, which are able to offer to these residents specifically. We also have our open house, um, which is our gender, gender neutral housing that's located in Prince George. Um, so this is the only wing in our traditional halls um, that allow for gender neutral housing for anyone to live into that space. Um, and then there's another suite designated in Wearing Commons, which is new this year um, for students to choose that option as well. Um, and then the last one that we have, so this doesn't um, really pertain to first year students because this is for our um, upperclassmen students that are in uh, the science majors, women specifically, we have women in housing sciences, which is a living learning community um, that I believe there is a credit that you can get for being in this community and taking part in some of the activities that um, go on there. But it's a nice community that we usually get great participation out of um, for those communities. So those are our three um, specialty housing that we have. Um, I've already sort of mentioned um, the term resident assistant. So I'm going to throw it over to Becca quickly to kind of explain what our staff structure is to kind of give you more information on what resident assistants do and what her position does um, for the students that we have on campus. Just just before you jump in, Becca, I just want to clarify that gender neutral is just that we don't look at gender when uh, making housing assignments so uh, students can live with who they feel comfortable living with. Yeah, so um, I started out as an RA or resident assistant in Caroline Hall actually. And there are six to seven resident assistants in each building. It's typically one per hall. And what that person is responsible for is basically providing a safe and welcoming community for the residents that live in that area. Um, RAs hold regular programs to kind of bring the community together. And they're ultimately there to make sure that everyone is safe and happy and um, making sure they're taken care of. Um, and then my role as a residence hall coordinator is to kind of oversee those resident assistants and make sure that they are supported with anything they may need and to act as a liaison between professional staff. So like Danielle and Derek and my RAs to make sure that they are also being taken care of. Rebecca, we had a question come in um, from Emma. She's asking, how can you become an RA? So can you just talk briefly about that and really about when the timelines occur? Definitely. So being an RA is an awesome option. I have loved it. I've done it for three years now. Uh, that option becomes available to you in your spring semester of your freshman year. So you are required to live on campus for one year before you can apply. Um, but then starting off your second year on campus, um, you can apply and you will be placed 
uh, in one of the buildings on campus, you might be on South Campus, you might be on North Campus. Uh, it's kind of where they think you will best fit the community and where you can best benefit residents in that area. Um, but it's a great option and I would definitely recommend it. Derek, we had another question come in. If I could just go ahead and jump in with it because it pertains to this. The question is, is it possible to room with a specific person of the opposite gender for the first year? Yes, uh, we do have limited spaces available in our open housing wing in French George Hall. Uh, so we have a few of those available for first year students who are interested in living uh, with a friend or someone that they know of the opposite gender. We'll be sending more information about that out um, after the housing selection process has started about how to apply for uh, that specific location. Also a quick plug, just to like round back to the RA position. So if you are interested in being a resident assistant, mark your calendars for about this time next year, um, because we just finished up our, our, our hiring process. So like you're very timely with your question. So put this in your calendar from a year for now. Interested? Let us know. Before you move on, I've got one more question mm -hmm. about specialty housing. So if a student chooses the drug and alcohol free housing as a freshman male, does that put them in residence halls that are quads across campus? Yeah, so the male students who choose that will be placed in wearing commons, um, usually in a suite, and there may be other upperclassmen in that suite with you as well, but we've had a handful of first year students that select that option. So it, it is um, separated from the traditional halls, but we still have that as being offered on our campus. So yeah. Sorry, hopefully that answered your question. All right, we'll jump into the next one. Um, so these are things that we that you can expect to see in each building. So as Derek uh, kind of explained how the buildings are set up with the hallways, um, there's there are key things that you can find in each of our spaces in every single building that we mentioned before. So Queen Anne, Dorchester, um, Prince George, and Caroline. So on the first floor, we have our bike room storage for students to um, put their bikes in. We have so many bikes on this campus that a lot of students use these. Um, we also have bike racks all over the place outside of campus. So we are very, I would say, bicycle friendly campus, even though we are so relatively small, but you see them all the time. Our bike rooms are stacked. So if you have a bike, be prepared to bring it. Um, we have a large rec room on the bottom floor of each of our lounges. So those have a TV, couches for students to just kind of like mingle and hang out. The RAs will do programs down there pretty frequently. There's also either a ping pong table or a pool table in there um, for students to utilize those as well. Um, there's a community kitchen in each of our buildings too. So you can um, cook that is stocked with um, like a big fridge so you can put things in there. You can also use the stove and any other like amenities that we have in those spaces. All the card access in that space is your um, key card. So your ID will let you into your space. Those are locked 24 seven, but you will have access obviously to your own building. There's a nice outdoor patio behind each of them. I think you could see that on the Queen Anne picture that we had in the first, the first um, set of slides. And then we have our laundry facilities. The laundry is um, free for you guys to use. That's kind of already in um, one of the fees associated with living on campus. Um, so you don't have to bring like a roll of quarters. You don't have to load money onto your card. So like you can use that unlimitedly at any time while you live in each of those buildings. Um, on the second floor, that is where the main entry is for um, most of, for all of the buildings. There's another lounge there as well, as well as the resident assistant staff office. So the RAs are on duty. I think Becca might have mentioned that, but they're on duty every night um, to be able to assist you in anything that you might need. Um, they're also like on call a lot as well, but you can always find them in the staff office. We have study rooms on the second and third floor so students can utilize those. And there's a nice outdoor balcony on the back of each of the buildings on the second floor too. Um, and then every floor has community bathrooms. So that's like the shared bathroom space for these areas. They all have residential spaces so you can live on any of the floors. And then the resident assistant staff, like Becca mentioned, 
um, is kind of scattered throughout the building, but usually one per wing or at least on each floor. Um, so they're kind of all over the place with you all as well. And then I'm gonna try to play this. I don't know if my audio will share. It's just kind of like sing songy, so you don't really need to hear it, I guess. But this kind of um, just walks through. I think it does like a panorama of the building itself. So hopefully, can you see that? I'll move this over. Okay. A lot of this writing is what Danielle just said. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that's tiny, but you can review these on the SMCM uh, YouTube webpage. Right. And there is one available for each of our traditional halls. I have a couple more questions before you jump ahead, if that's all right. Yeah. Okay, so I think this is a good question for all three of you to answer, um, because I think it's something that is different for everybody. Uh, the question is, what are the most important things to bring for your freshman year living in the residence hall? So this is probably gonna sound like really dumb, but my freshman year, I did not bring a pillow with me for move-in and I became very close to my roommate because she had an extra pillow and I had to use hers until I could buy another pillow. So don't forget your pillow. Um, this sounds very basic, but when you're packing all the things that you think you need, that's definitely something that can get easily left behind, I would say. What do you think, Becca? Well, I think I did this pretty recently, but uh, I think some pretty common things um, a mini fridge, you can have one per room. So usually once you get assigned a roommate, you can coordinate with them and see who wants to bring the mini fridge. Um, those do fit under most of the beds, by the way. Um, to decorate the room and kind of make it feel like home, I think that can be really important. You can do tapestries, rugs, the lights like we mentioned. And I would say some good snacks to have on hand. Um, I used my electric kettle a lot to make some ramen and some tea. That's what I would suggest. I always say just bring what makes you comfortable. So, you know, in the next couple months while you're home, look at your room, think about your home experience, um, make St. Mary's your home. So bring those things that, you know, you just can't live without. So it's going to be different for everyone. But uh, if it's that uh, piece of art in your room that reminds you of someone from back home, you know, make sure that you bring those things because that'll make your experience a lot more comfortable here. Yeah, and I'm going to answer this too. I'll give you a bonus answer. Um, to me, it is, I, I totally agree with you, Derek. You kind of stole my, my answer, but I also think just a nice snuggly blanket. Again, something you can wrap up in, be comfortable in, and just make your room your own. Um, another question on here, Danielle. So there's a, it talks about bike storage. You talked about bikes. Can you talk about like skateboards or longboards, bike? I guess you're talking about bikes. Longboards, skateboards other ways of getting around campus, are those okay? Yeah, we actually um, have a lot of students, I think that use skateboards and longboards. Um, so they're, they're again, all over the place on campus. So you're definitely encouraged to bring those. Honestly, like if you don't know how to skateboard, you can probably find someone to teach you how to do that on this campus because there's a lot. So definitely, definitely bring it if you wanna bring it. Um, I, I know some students do store those in the bike room too, but since they're so small, like most people just keep them in their rooms, which is fine too. You're definitely allowed to have those. Which brings up the next question. Lots of questions about what's allowed. So I'll give you um, a couple of them. Okay. Are candles allowed? Are microwaves allowed? Are fans allowed? And are heaters allowed? Um, candles. I was going to say yes, no, yes, yes. Uh, so <laughs> candles, candles are not, I would say you can have them if you take the wick out of them. So if there's a chance that there's going to be an open flame 
in in your room, then remove the potential of an open flame. Um, so anything that does have a burning element, like a flame burning element, should stay home. So if you have a candle that's very powerfully scented that you don't intend to burn, um, and the wick is never burnt, or you can just like cut that off and bring that with you because it'll s smell your room, smell your room, make your room smell nicely, then by all means, feel free to bring that, but you cannot have a burning element with a flame. So don't, don't bring that. Um, we do have students that have the wax melters. I would just say, be very, very careful with those. So if there's ones that you can find with like an automatic shut off that don't get too hot, um, or just be very, very mindful of bumping into the wax. So I know from experience that the wax is very hard um, to get off tile floor. Um, so you don't wanna bump like melted wax and then get that on the floor and cause damage to anything in the room. Um, so I would say you can have those very carefully. Um, but again, as long as like they're not burning when you're not in that space or if they have like an automatic shut off that turns them off when they get too hot, like that's, that's fine. Um, you cannot have microwaves in the traditional halls, but there is like a community microwave um, that students can use that, that is in the kitchen. So that's, that's there for you to, to use that if you want to. We do have a lot of students that will like make popcorn and stuff in that, in that space. Um, heaters, I think was one, you, no, no to heaters. Uh, they do pose a high risk of, um, I would say catastrophe. So we're not, we don't allow those in the building. They're very dangerous um, to have in like traditional hall settings. Um, and I think there was another one, but I don't remember what the last thing was. Those were the last one. Sorry, what was it? Can you have a fan? Oh, fans. Um, yeah, window fans you can, you can have. I'm assuming you don't mean like you're gonna fix one to the ceiling. You can't do that, but if you want to bring in like a box window fan, like the, or a pedestal fan, or a yeah, pop, I forget or... the ones. I think it starts with an O that twists around, os oscillating. Mm -hmm. yep. We'll talk about the housing contract in a little bit, but um, within the housing contract, there are a list of prohibited items of all the other things that you would think you can't bring. Those yeah. are listed there as well. Yeah, and I think the big thing to think about on this is, I mean, safety, obviously, we don't want to burn down a building. So, you know, no open flames. That's, that's pretty obvious. Um, the other thing here is just, this is your first rental. And so you're not going to live here forever. When you leave, you want the place to look like it did when you moved in or better than it did even when you moved in. <laughs> So that's why we're saying, you know, uh, be careful with the wax burner. I, I've seen wax splattered down a wall and it's not pretty and it's very, very difficult to clean up. So just think in, in the back of your mind, you know, what am I doing that's going to keep this place the same as it was when I moved in? Um, last question here and then we can move on. And that's the rules about hanging items, paintings, posters, tapestries, that kind of thing. Yeah, we, we definitely do encourage you to bring things from home to decorate your space. Like I think Becca mentioned, like Becca has a tapestry right behind her right now. So <laughs> we definitely allow those. Um, one thing that I would not suggest and some of you cannot do is to hang things over any light fixtures. Um, so like I said, we had the overhead lights um, in the buildings, in the rooms. Um, and I, I know there's a tendency to kind of cover those up to like make your room purple, but that, that is also kind of a fire safety risk uh, for us. So you can't hang things from the ceilings necessarily, but you can hang like twinkly lights on the walls. You can hang tapes, tapestries on the walls. You can't um, nail things into the walls and things like that, but um, the, I think there are three M hooks and like the sticky tack, that stuff works. Um, a lot of our students do use those three M hooks. And if you peel them off very carefully, like it, it, it does not rip the wall. I mean, if you just like rip it, it's going to, but as long as you're careful with it, you can go ahead and do that. Awesome. Oh, I think I saw a question about hanging curtains. So 
well, you can hang hang curtains in there, but a lot of the like a lot of curtain rods require um, the the brackets to be like nailed in to the wall, so you can't use those. Um, but you can hang like light curtains if you use like the three M hooks on the sides of your window. So as long as the window isn't blocked um, like completely, so you can't you know put like another like a block over the window or a wall up over your window because that's also a like, safety issue. Um, but curtains and stuff are are fine as long as you're not nailing it into the wall. Those should be okay. okay. And there was. It. There was one more question about decorating the rooms. Are there shelves in the rooms? And then can plants be hung from the ceiling? So nothing can be hung from the ceiling, um, but there are, so there aren't, there aren't shelves I would say per se, but there is a, like a window sill on the bottom of the window. Um, there's the desks are in there. And then depending on how you would like situate your dresser, um, with like the closet space and things like that, there are things like places to stack things. Um, I do think a lot of students will bring in like a small end table for a nightstand and things like that. So you can definitely kind of dress up your room a little bit that way. So you, there's definitely places to put things, but not necessarily like shelves tacked into the walls. We to move on. Sorry, Shanna, I think I lost you on that one. I could see you talking. But... That's okay. I think we're ready for the next one. Okay. Let's go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's trying to start the video again. Ooh, another trivia time. Go ahead, Becca. All right. Don't look this one up. From <laughs> your brain, in what year was St. Mary's founded? Thanks, Derek. Yep. Okay, we're gonna jump in to talk a little bit about the differences with our returning and transfer student housing. So this is more primarily for students that are sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Um, so if you're a new student, like brand new student, this is something for you to look forward to in the coming year. So we have a couple options. Um, we have our Lewis Quad area, um, who, which houses six person, 10 person and 14 person suites. Um, we have Waring Commons, which holds six person suites and four person apartments. And then we have our townhouses, which is where Becca is working for us now, um, which houses all of our townhouses, which are four people who can live in those spaces. So the apartments um, and the townhouses are, are places that have the kitchens and are the most independent areas that we have on campus. So those are reserved for our junior and senior students. But the suites in both Lewis Quad and the Wearing Commons area, just the suites, um, you only need to be like a returning student or a transfer student. Um, so any sophomore level or higher is eligible to live in those spaces. So we have placed transfer students there this year specifically, I think all of our incoming transfer students or the primarily most of them ended up living in LQ or wearing commons, which was kind of nice um, to mix in with other upperclassmen students. Um, so this is kind of like the general layout of where things are on campus. So um, South Campus um, refers to all the traditional halls. So this is just kind of a a description of where things are right now in terms of wearing commons and LQ and the, the townhouse in the Crescent. So right here we have um, our Crescent's townhouses. This is an old picture I'm realizing the old stadium spaces here, um, but the Crescent's are kind of like in a curvature um, Crescent, I guess. And then the townhouses are on the greens, which is where you will also um, have your first welcoming um, ceremony for orientation. I think that's usually where that is. And then you will also graduate from that space as well and come full circle um, at this institution, which is kind of nice. Um, but that's just kind of the layout of we have over on our other area of campus. It's a very beautiful um, shot of the campus aerial view. If you look at where uh, it says the Crescents, uh, we're actually uh, built, putting up a new building right here. Um, so this will be our new academic and uh, uh, music building. Um, it'll house our music. It has a, a nice auditorium that holds 
number of people. Um, not useful right now, but we're looking forward to the time when we can gather in large numbers again. Um, and our uh, master's, uh, our ed studies department will also be housed there along um, with a little cafe and learning commons. So we're really excited about this building. Um, just a little bit more information about the staff who work on campus. We talked about the resident assistants. Um, those are the student staff that are there for you, but we also have professional staff here. So if there's any parents listening, we do have a good safety net for your students um, while they live here on campus. So we have four to five uh, professional staff members who live on campus with the students. They're there as on-call professionals. So if there are emergencies, things that come up in the middle of the night, um, that they need to talk to an adult, we are here for them. Uh, we also have a fantastic public safety staff who um, is here 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year to assist students with whatever um, issues they may have, large or small. So I guess another, I'm trying to think of other housing related um, things for this side of campus. So the transfer students that we place over here um, can come in with roommates that they know. So if you know of students that are living over here that have like a vacancy in their space, um, meaning that they selected housing and have an opening with them, we do do our best to move you into that space because that's very convenient for you and for the people that you know already. Um, if you, you can match yourself through our student matching, so other transfer students can match together um, with the roommate matching process, which we'll talk about in a little bit. I think it's in a later slide to kind of go over that. Um, but we, we also have been able to move um, other transfers onto this side of campus um, in just in spaces with other students that have had vacancies open. So we've had RA units that have had multiple spots open. So that's in some of the bigger suites. I think I mentioned there are 14 person suites. So sometimes we don't fill all of those. Um, so often we can put our incoming sophomores and juniors in there. Um, if we do have incoming students um, that have 50 or more credits, we do try to place them in the apartments or the townhouses um, to be more with the other upperclassmen that they're potentially taking classes with in that same level. Um, so you, as, a, as an incoming transfer student, you may be placed with a group of students who selected to live together um, who had an opening, we tell them in advance so they know that somebody's being placed with them and you will get their information to contact them through the summer as soon as you have placement. So you don't just come up to campus and like move in with another group of people. You'll still get all their information the same as the first year student placements. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, there's just more options, I think, on this side of campus. There's a little bit different things that we can do. Um, whereas in the traditional halls, it is mostly utilized by first year students, but we do have a decent number of returning students who are sophomores, juniors, or seniors even, um, that choose to live over there for convenience purposes. Um, or because I think Derek said, like, sometimes there's just a vibe of each building that you just kind of get used to. I think he compared this to the Hogwarts houses. So like, if you're Caroline for life, you might want to live in Caroline the whole four years that you're here. And that's totally fine. And we have a decent amount of students that want to do that. So uh, I think I have said that the traditional halls are, they're not necessarily like our first year halls, but all of our first year students do get placed into one of those four. Um, but there are upperclassmen that live there. Your roommate as a first year student will also be another first year student. Um, so we do try to place people that way. So similarly in the townhouses, so if you're an incoming junior, we'll try to place you with other juniors, um, again, to kind of put you on the same level in terms of classes and things like that. Okay. Um, we have a couple of questions about animals. Oh, so, yeah. Um, one of the questions is about if emotional support animals are allowed. So an mm -hmm. ESA. And then another question is, are pets allowed? And those are two different things. So I guess. Yep. So generally, uh, pets are not allowed. Um, so we do allow non-venomous reptiles as pets. Um, I believe Becca had, has an axolotl. Did you have an axolotl at one point? I have a dragon. You have a dragon. Okay. 
that's not helpful. <laughs> uh, so we do have students who have, um, you know, non-venomous reptiles that they keep in their rooms um, in tanks that are 20 gallons or less. Uh, we do allow for no cats, dogs, things with fur in general for just general pet um, purposes, but we do allow for uh, emotional support animals and there is a process to apply for that through our Office of Accommodations. Uh, they talk to you about uh, the, the need for it and get your documentation for it and then they notify us um, if you are approved for uh, an emotional support animal. Awesome. Thank you. Got another trivia coming up. Oh, do we have next one coming up? Before we get to that, I did see another question in the chat with um, two people per room in the townhouses. Um, so since we're still on this slide, so the traditional halls do have two people in each room. The townhouses have four people in those spaces, but there are two people in a bedroom in the townhouse. So each townhouse has two bedrooms, four people. Um, the rest of the suite, so the 14, the six, or the 10, all are double rooms. So the six person suites have three rooms, but six people live there. Um, and then the WC apartments are single rooms in those apartments. So it's four bedrooms, um, four people that live there. But most, most of our options other than WC are all double room occupancy options. Just Danielle, can, you, can you go ahead? I mean, obviously COVID's on everybody's mind and safety mm -hmm. and social distancing. So as far as traditional halls, can you go ahead and just talk about that as well? Will there be single rooms available? Will we have double occupancy? What's the plan for the fall as far as roommates and housing? So we are planning on primarily having um, double occupancy. So I know this year, um, if you know other first year students this year, a lot of our students did have the option to have a single room. Um, it, it really does depend on how many students that we have in, in the buildings. Um, so right now we're using like our hybrid learning model um, next year. Hopefully we won't have to be doing that. So we'll be fully on the ground, fully in person um, with two people in the rooms. Um, we did measure all of our spaces out in the beginning of the summer. Most of our traditional halls do offer a nice six foot buffer between each bed. Um, I know that's that doesn't sound like as safe as everybody would want that to be, but it does kind of offer um, some level of social distancing that we have. We also are this year, at least potentially next year, I would say require um, students, not require, but recommend students to use the bathrooms that they are assigned to, to cut down on people using other people's spaces. Masks are worn in our buildings at all times, unless you're in um, your, your residential space. So even when you're just walking down the hall to leave the building or going to the bathroom. I mean, if you're, if you're taking a shower, or like brushing your teeth, clearly we don't require you to wear your mask. But other than that, most students are wearing their masks at all times as part of our policy. So we are doing a lot of safety measures, as many safety measures as we can to keep going with that. Our physical plant staff is cleaning um, our bathrooms and our common spaces more than ever before <laughs> in a different year. Um, so we're definitely trying to keep up with as much as much as much and as safely as possible as we go through that. I don't know, Derek, if you have anything else you want to add for that, but um, we're trying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you, in general, uh, singles um, are available for medical reasons right. for first year students. So uh, if there is a need, then the same office that we talked about for emotional support animals would do in um, procuring a single room for the year. Yeah, and I, I guess I just want to add in there, COVID is one of those things that it is just changing daily. Um, vaccines are rolling out, and our hope is that everybody who wants a vaccine will be able to get one this summer. And that just changes the game as far as safety goes and, and um, having roommates and some of the rules and regulations we'll have on campus as well. So a lot of this is in flex, but I can tell you St. Mary's campus has been so safe. Um, like anywhere else, we've had our cases, but I think at, at its most, it was less than 1.5% uh, positivity rate. 
So we have done a phenomenal job and that's thanks to our students for taking all the guidelines so seriously and for all of the staff and the, the cleaning crew who have helped make our campus safe. So let's keep going because I'm, I'm pretty sure I wanna see this trivia question. Yeah, all right, Becca, you are up. All right, what was the most played Spotify song in 2020? You know it if you watch the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how do you know All right. Spotify account? <laughs> I'm not hip these days. All right, meal plans. Nice segue. Just kidding. Okay, so we do have a bunch of a bunch of different meal plan options. So the most um, common one that we have, I would say, is our silver meal plan. Um, so all first year students do have the requirement of having a silver, gold, or platinum meal plan. So these are unlimited plans. Um, so I know we got a question before that was like, if I have the silver plan, like, would I have enough meal swipes? Yep, you can use them at any time um, when the great room, which is our big cafeteria, is open, um, which is like 8, 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Monday through Friday, I think. So you can just go in there and swipe like crazy. Uh, so there, all three of those plans are unlimited. Um, and then they have flex dollars and guest passes. So guest passes is what you can use to swipe in a guest that you have. So you have a friend that doesn't have a meal plan, you can swipe them in. Uh, your parents come down for the weekend, swipe them in with a guest plan. The flex, um, flex can be used literally anywhere on campus. So we have the daily grind, which is like coffee, um, smoothies, uh, different like pre bag, like I think they have like chips and different things that you can, some random groceries there that you can use flex on. You can use your flex dollars in our vending machines. Um, and then the most commonly used place would be our pub. So we got Solomon's Kitchen, um, which serves like pub food late at night. Um, pretty good, pretty good options over there. And then also in the, in Solomon's Kitchen, you can use your meal swipes for the breakfast and lunch um, just like grab and go options. So we got, we have a lot of different options for you guys to be able to use. Um, but the, the unlimited plans are really, really useful to our first year students. Um, incoming transfer students can choose from additional options depending on your placement. Um, so if you would be placed in one of the suites, we have a flex plan that has 125 um, swipes per, or not, sorry, it's 125 meal credits. So that's like swipes in our great room or in the other areas too. So the uh, Solomon's Kitchen for a semester. Um, but if you're placed in a townhouse or um, one of our WC apartments, if you have a kitchen in your unit, you don't actually need to have a meal plan because you have a kitchen right there in your unit. So it kind of gives you more options um, if you're in those spaces. But we, we definitely recommend the silver meal plan at least, um, at least for a semester so you can um, kind of get used to like the food on campus and see what options that we have. We do allow changes at mid-year. So in between each semester, you are allowed to change your meal plan almost up until the time we start school. So I think it's um, one week before classes start, you can change your meal plan. Um, so if you had the gold meal plan in the fall and you want to get rid of that and go down to the silver meal plan because you didn't use your flex dollars, cool in the spring you can just change that out and then the following year you can pick something entirely different so definitely different options there so danielle one of my favorite things to do is to go to the daily grind and get my latte yeah and um with 200 dollars flex i mean i can spend that pretty quickly yeah so if i spend my 200 dollars flex can i add more money you can always add more money onto your account um I, Derek, I don't know if you can add actual flex, but you can definitely add um, a declining balance onto your account, which is what I would recommend anyway. So that way the declining balance, so outside of flex, outside of guest passes, outside of meal swipes, those carry over every semester. So you run out of your 200 um, flex dollars, you can just add an unlimited amount of declining balance, um, whatever you wanna add to your account. And then it's still on your card and you can really just use it the same way. So it's definitely an option. Okay. And then what about options in the great room? So vegan, vegetarian, how, how are those throughout the year? 
Yeah, so we, yeah, go ahead, Derek. Our, our, we have a fantastic food uh, dining provider, Bon Appetit. Um, they do a great job of providing lots of different options for us. So whether, um, you know, traditional fare or very um, interesting and uh, great vegan and vegetarian food, they're very conscious of all our students' uh, dietary needs. So uh, they pay attention to nut allergies, soy allergy, all of that. Um, so we have one of the top line, many students come here from other schools to visit and they uh, sort of mark at how great our dining services are. Uh, so I think you'll be very satisfied with what you, you'll be able to get here. Um, I would encourage all of you to really take advantage of the unlimited meal plan your first year. I know my first year, sometimes I went up to four times a day. It's a great place to uh, have meetings, see your friends, uh, do homework. I know sometimes I see people in there in class. Um, maybe don't do that, but it is a really great place to kind of get that campus community going. There are people from all different ages and years um, and just take full advantage of it. It's a really great opportunity. What about kosher food? Is kosher food available? Absolutely. Um, bon Appetit uh, definitely caters to kosher students, kosher food. Uh, they have it available throughout the year um, on the main line. And if students do need special, uh, they have special dietary restrictions, they can work with the general manager of Bon Appetit to have it prepared especially for them. And he's just awesome. I mean, he's there in the dining center. He's somebody who gets to know students. He waves, he's, he's friendly. So he's easy to work with. Mm -hmm. and they do special things throughout the year too, just to kind of break the monotony. You know, if you think about you're eating at the same place, they have special meals, they have midnight breakfast. So um, a lot of good things come from with the meal plan. And we had uh, daiquiris uh, this afternoon, uh, non-alcoholic daiquiris. <laughs> And yesterday they had quesadillas, so they do all sorts of fun things throughout the week to make it a, a better dining experience. Yeah, and just in case, I know we are sharing a ton of information. Um, please feel free to reach out to Res Life, to admissions, and yes, this is absolutely being recorded so you can watch it again later, just for fun. If you want to, that'd be amazing. You can just watch it for fun. I know we're running out of time, but we have one more trivia question and then just information about how do uh, the housing application process will work. And I know as you're talking through this, there've been a ton of questions understandably about roommates. So if you could make sure to talk about roommates uh, with the timeline, that'd be awesome. All right, super quickly, another trivia question. What does m and as in the candy stand for? All right, so we'll talk quickly about our housing process too. So our housing applications contracts are completed through a resident system. So that's our management software. You will all be getting um, emails from, I believe both myself and admissions, our admissions staff will be sending information out to you um, that will have all of your login information. So this, this step happens um, around March 22nd, that's when your contracts will become available to you. And those will be available to anyone who has um, paid the uh, deposit thus far. So after March 22nd, that doesn't mean you have, you won't be able to get the contract after March 22nd. So after that, it's kind of on a rolling basis as deposits come in, we'll be able to give you access to the application and the contract. Um, so you'll get an email that will be sent to your SMCM email address with very specific directions, with your login information, all that good stuff. And then you'll just go right on the system. There'll be a link in that email as well. You'll get on there, fill out your contract, um, and then you'll kind of be good to go. So in that system, you'll be able to select your meal plan, put your preference, um, and then complete a roommate preference, kind of like a roommate preference form. Um, so after... June 1, which is when contracts are due, we will take them later if you're a little late on it, so don't fear. Um, but in order to be able to see all the other roommates that could be available to you, I would highly recommend getting those in by June 1st. So after June 1st, um, really through the middle of June, we have our roommate matching portal that's open. I actually think it might open a little bit before June 1, but you'll be able to get in there um, search for different roommates in our selection module. 
um, meet roommates that you might be interested in living with. So you'll be able to message people directly through that system. It's super convenient. Um, and then pair, pair yourself together from there. So if you know of other students that are coming to St. Mary's that you want to live with, you'll just get their roommate code. It'll be at the top of your residence screen after you complete your uh, contract and you'll just pair yourself up really easily through that. But then on the other side of that, you can also um, meet people through this system. If you don't meet anyone through this system, don't worry. Uh, we will match you with somebody and then we'll still give you enough time to um, talk to them before uh, you actually move onto campus. So our goal is to have all of the housing confirmations sent out to you by the middle of July. So that kind of gives you from June 1 to June 18th to kind of get in there and sort out, find who you want to live with. And then after that, um, that gives us time to continue to pair students that may not have found a roommate through that process um, and also place you into a room um, and send that stuff out to you so you have all the information that you need before you come back to campus or before you come onto campus in August. So, and then Caitlin, Caitlin wanted to plug Zimi. Um, that's where you can get to know other entering students now. So you don't have to wait until the summer or when school starts. So if you don't have somebody in mind for a roommate, that might be a great place to find somebody. They have a roommate match in that system. So that's Zimi. Mm -hmm. Um, some other quick roommate questions. Are freshmen only housed with freshmen? Yeah, yes, we, we do place all of our first year students with other first year students. But like I said, there will be upperclassmen within the building, but you will be matched as a first year student with another first year student. And um, just to clarify, can you apply for single housing and how is that different? So again, uh, we reserve uh, some single rooms for first year students who need them for medical accommodations. Uh, so similarly to the way we talked about applying for an emotional support animal, you would be able to apply for a single with our Office of Accommodations. And that email that's referenced, the email that goes to the SMCM email address with directions, will that have the portal to the housing contract? Yeah, that'll have the link um, to get into that system as well as um, directions on what your login information um, to get into that system will be. So that, that email will have a lot, <laughs> I would say, in there for you. And you'll probably hear it from a bunch of us in these upcoming yeah. <laughs> meetings, but uh, there's a checklist that admissions is going to send you with a, a lot of things to do to get ready to come to St. Mary's. Um, you know, just stay on top of that. All of that information is very important to make sure that you're ready to go as soon as you get here. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Ooh, we do have one more trivia question. All right, last trivia question. What is the newest academic building on campus other than the one that's currently being? <laughs> so we have Kent Hall, Good Pastor Hall, Anne Arundel Hall, and Montgomery Hall. And you'll get I am going to put the link to the Google form in the chat. So if you take a look there, you can copy that, there it is, um, and put it in your browser. Make sure that you tell us uh, your name, ID number, and your shirt size. Um, and anyone who answers all of those questions correctly will go into a drawing for a prize that we will send you. Are there any other questions, outstanding questions? Yeah, I think that we got through most of them. Oh, one question. Hey, how do I know my ID number? I think that would be a great admissions question. <laughs> do they? I don't even know if you have your ID number yet. I think I'll be able to answer that question. First, you would need to deposit. Um, and that would be how your uh, student ID number is generated but if you're referring to the roommate code, I believe that that will um, show up on the application for housing. Am I mm -hmm. correct in saying that? Yeah, so um, if you don't have your ID number yet for the purposes of our Google form, just type in like one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, that way we won't be removing you from our potential list of excellent trivia takers. Um, but I think your roommate code, your roommate code will be available on the residence portal. I don't think it's in that email. So when you get into residence, you'll get um, 
like on your home screen, there will be just a little little note at the very top that just says roommate code, and that's where you'll get that. Okay, and it looks like a couple of people need some permission to open the doc, so we'll open that up to anybody inside and outside our organization so that y'all can get that. Um, some questions to clarify dates for the fall. Um, there is a question about when move-in is, and I just want to preface this with, you know, again, we are still in the midst of a pandemic. Um, unfortunately, last year we did have to phase our fall move-in, and we just did that for safety's sake. Again, we've had excellent safety throughout the year, um, but I would say, you know, with all things for fall, grain of salt and flexibility are so, so important. So as you know, we provide dates, if for some reason things all went south, um, we may need to change things just for safety's sake. So um, some patience with that and just make sure you're reading your email is so important. Um, there was another question about what if I um, am not quite ready to deposit um, or if I'm all deposited and um, I just don't know which hall I want to live in, I don't know who my roommate is, when is too late? And will I not get my choice if I wait? Um, I would... I would recommend, um, if you can, definitely turning everything in by the deadline. So getting the contract in by the first um, helps give you more options um, for in the roommate matching. So the earlier you do it, um, the more options that you will have. But I will say, like even even if you're turning it in past that like we we do really try to honor everybody's requests I know like it, it can't be done for everybody if every single person requests to be in like Prince George like, we can't obviously house all of you in Prince George um but we definitely try to place everyone where they want to go if we can um your options I would say do become more limited the longer that you wait but we I don't think we'll be in a situation where we won't be able to house you if you turn it in very late. Um, so I, I would say like when you're ready to turn it in, definitely turn it in. Um, but then along the way, if you have questions about things, um, you can always email me or you can email Derek or Monica Armstrong, who's our office manager, um, or call our office. Um, any, any of us in our office will be more than happy to answer your questions. We have student staff that work in here that are probably no more answers than I do in terms of like how to find a roommate, what kind of roommate to look for, that kind of thing. And talking about talking through your preferences of where you want to live. Um, we're more than willing to do that with you. So definitely don't hesitate to like ask us questions when you have them. Um, but I, I, if you miss the June one deadline, it's, it, it's not the end. Like we'll, we'll still be able to help you out even if you're past that deadline. So don't worry too, too much about it. It's, it's best if you do it on time, but if it can't be done, that's fine too. I, I think we've gotten through almost all of the questions. Um, there's a, do we have time? Can we finish answering the last few questions? Is that all right? Um, there's a question about, are the beds adjustable? And that's yes. So that, mm -hmm. that picture that was there previously showed one of the beds was adjusted up or they mm -hmm. could be bunked so you could yep. save space in your room. Um, there's also a question about parking. Where is parking in proximity to the different halls and is it free? Parking is not free. It's $50 per semester. Um, uh, you'll get information about that through the student portal um, so that you can select the lot. Most of our first year students will park in lot T uh, and it's uh, closer to our athletic, uh, new athletic stadium. Um, Queen Anne, they will be able to park uh, closer to, yeah, uh, or a little further back, you know. Yeah, that one. <laughs> uh, so uh, most students will park there, first year students will park there, uh, but upper class students get to park in a variety of areas. Um, lot R there between Lewis Quad and Waring Commons is very popular. And I would just say it's such a walkable campus. Um, of course, if you need accommodations, there's um, accessible parking, but otherwise it is a very, very walkable campus. 
And we do provide a shopping shuttle for students who don't have cars to be able to get into town and also utilize your friends that you will make to, um, you know, set up shuttles and back home if you're not able to bring a car. I think that there was just maybe one more question that didn't get answered. And it was when they come to visit, will they be able to see a, a dorm room? Um, I was trying to keep, do my best to keep track of which questions were answered on a Google Doc. And I, I think I did a good job, but I think that was one that wasn't answered yet. Yeah, and I'll jump in on that one just as because it's kind of COVID related. Part of it will depend on when you come and part of it will depend on where we're at with COVID protocols. So we always love for folks to be able to see them, but um, right at this moment, we're trying to keep our campus as safe as we can. So um, a lot of that will just depend on when you're coming to campus and we'll try to keep all of our visitors to campus updated as, as well as we can. Generally though, we'd love for people to be able to see our spaces. And in normal times, they would be able to. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would say also, um, I think Shanna mentioned the YouTube channel. Um, there are definitely like, I, I know a video is not the same as like being in the space, but there are definitely, I would definitely use those to your disposal at this point. Cause we do have a video, I think for every traditional hall. Um, and then there are other pictures on our website as well. Um, on a website. I'm not really sure where it's housed right now. I'm thinking about it. Um, but then you can kind of at least get a sense of what these spaces look like. That way, if you can't make it down here while we're able to do the tours, like you can still kind of see the space um, at least virtually, but I would definitely utilize those if you can. I just want to add that, by the way, we are open for tours. So students feel free to come down and we will take you around the campus. We just can't take you inside, you know, the residence halls. But I think we figured out a way that we're going to try to show the video before you go off on tour. So at least you can see what the inside would look like. Um, uh, although I think you got a great idea from all the pictures you showed this evening. But just to let you know, we're going to do our best to show you as much as we can. We just, you know, uh, while you're here and we would love to have you visit. Yeah, and it's yes. such a beautiful campus. I see in the comments, I went today, I love the campus, and we do too. It's a gorgeous campus, so we do hope to get you all here soon so you can see it if you haven't yet. We were right, so we're, glad that you came to visit, Jayla. One last burning question. I think this will be our last question of the night. How many on a floor share a bathroom? It is um, roughly, I think our max is 24 students. That is one of the larger wings in a building, uh, but mostly it's smaller than students per bathroom. Uh, yeah, and I, oh. Well, I'll just throw out a caveat that like, oh my gosh, that sounds like a lot. This is going to sound crazy. I know it. Some of my best memories are sharing a bathroom with other people. I mean, really, that's where you see people on a daily basis. It's where you connect. It's where you um, sing songs. You see each other. You ask how the day is going. So um, don't let that be daunting to you because it's actually a plus. And what you, you'll learn quickly is that everyone gets into their groove and into their schedule. It's not like every time you walk into the bathroom, there will be 24 people to greet you. Um, you will all learn when you need to be there, when your class schedules are, and you'll find that it, it, it isn't um, as bad as it may sound. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> all right, well, thank you all for um, hanging out with us tonight. There were awesome questions and um, we're going to go check out that Google Doc and see who our big trivia winners were. If there are any ongoing questions, please reach out to admissions and um, we'll make sure to get uh, your questions answered. And we just can't wait to see you at St. Mary's. So thanks for coming. Thank you all. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Have a nice night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you too. Um, like I said, I did my best to keep track of all of the questions that were answered. Um, and I figured if anybody had any burning, oh, it's only the seven of us, I think. Oh, no, a couple people still here. Um, but I, I kept track of those questions and who asked them. 
and uh hopefully I'm pretty sure we actually answered like 99% of the questions there were there was one student that did message me privately uh and asked about TVs in the dorm rooms I said you would probably want to check with your roommate and also keep in mind that you're not going to be able to mount them so you'll need to put furniture uh yeah put, we put it on furniture yeah I don't think we have like a limit on the amount of TVs that you can have I know some people try to like stack a gaming TV and then a TV TV and then yeah and that was the yeah. the second part of that question yeah. it was about um it was about gaming consoles so yeah yeah uh, they can I definitely definitely have them but yeah I think you're you're on to it is checking Good. I, I'm glad I gave the right answer yeah. <laughs> it, it, like I said you can ask out you know ask the you know main chat if you want to but I don't he don't he never did so um yeah 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 anyhow Wait, where you did all David have... fly in and out of because I saw him responding. I saw a monster post from him and then he was gone. <laughs> I was like, what? I know. I'm like, wait, where did he go? <laughs> I didn't even see him leave. I just saw the one <laughs> giant paragraph. That was it. But oh. I, I didn't see him come in. I looked at one point and never saw him. Sarah, he came, he came right in, like right at the very beginning, like maybe oh. not even 10 minutes in. I wonder how I missed him. Oh, well, I'm curious. No, well, anyway, I can't see when he entered, but you all have a great rest of your night. I'm going to stop uh, recording thanks. and end the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.